People are often surprised to hear that I, as someone who has flown every luxurious airline and cabin in the world, think Air Asia is one of the best value airlines at least before COVID. This was only my second time flying them after COVID, so of course, I was very interested to see if the Air Asia experience still lives up to what it used to be. That was not supposed to rhyme, but why not? Come with me as I fly from Bangkok to Kuala Lumpur, a very popular route for many airlines, including Air Asia, as I show you what I think about the modern Air Asia experience. Look who's the airport dad and walking ahead today. So today we are flying an airline. I really haven't flown that much since the pandemic, once or twice only, but used to fly a lot pre-pandemic. And actually, if you're traveling around Asia, it's likely you've come across them. It's always scary when flying a low-cost airline, wondering what the check-in line will be like. Today doesn't seem to be a problem. Okay, actually, it's a different desk, so hope it's not too bad there. It doesn't look too bad from here. These are so amazing, always. So Oscar and I were arguing over whose bag weighed the most. And I knew, because I was going to put it on the scale, but he was like, no, you're supposed to help me. <laughs> but I mean, yeah, it makes sense. Mine is usually the heaviest. So now, now we hope for not too long of a wait to get through passport control and security, which is the next hinder or next barrier, but we have an hour and a half, so. Look who's here. Very, very unsafe to get on board this aircraft. If you want to hear more about why flying with Russian Airlines is so dangerous, I mean, it's sort of self-explanatory with all these sanctions, but we have a deep dive into it on our podcast. When I say our, it's not me and Oscar, it's me and my friend, aviation analyst. Sadly. Yeah, <laughs> it's me and Alex Macheras. It's called On Air. You can check that out at a link in the description. I can't just say Aeroflot. I always have to say Aeroflot. Look where it's going. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's pretty cool. I would kind of want to get on that flight, to be honest. <laughs> One thing that is so fun and unique about Bangkok's airport is that there are like 20 priority pass lounges to choose from. So many airline lounges are part of it here, like Turkish Airlines, uh, Bangkok Airways, and the lounge we have decided to go to, Oman Air, is generally thought of as one of the best lounges here and it's in the exact concourse. So you're gonna get a little mini review of one of the best lounges in Bangkok before we fly one of the most budget airlines that flies to Bangkok. I have to say, it actually feels a little bit nostalgic flying Air Asia again. I think a lot of people can relate. We used to fly it a lot before the pandemic around Southeast Asia. Like, we would get on those flights so often and now it's, then like we have had a drought period with almost no Eurasia flights. Only Kuala Lumpur to Brunei last yeah, year. Exactly, yeah. So it feels almost like going back in time. Okay, we just left the lounge, used the toilet. Someone was smoking in the bathroom, which they are absolutely not supposed to be doing. It smelled not great. So let's, let me find Oscar and let's hear what he thought about the lounge. Okay, so how was the lounge? <laughs> um. <laughs> Wait, I'm just looking, that's the, the old, where's the old Thai Airways first class lounge? I'm trying to. Am I gonna get to respond? <laughs> it was a bit awkward to vlog in there because it was quite full, that's how good. Yeah, I mean, it's very small, it's 
I mean, it's not like I would choose to stay there over just sitting in the terminal, but the difference isn't that big. It's yeah, just I wouldn't pay to access it. No. The food was nice though. The hummus was like what you'd expect from hummus in Southeast Asia, but the red curry, super good. Okay, so it is a bus gate. I'm currently tracking our plane. It arrived from Krabi, just landed. So of course it has to go to the domestic part of the airport, which for some reason I didn't connect the fact that we would have to take a bus over there, but of course that makes sense. So we're just waiting. Departures in 20 minutes, no bus yet so far. It's an interesting experience. I realize this is like between my 30th to 40th time at BKK and I've never had a bus gate before, which is a very good ratio comparing to, you know, let's say Doha, where it's a bus gate nine out of 10 times, I feel. Check this out, how awesome. So they have hand sanitizer on the bus. You hold on, and then before you get off, So oh, look, <laughs> you have to walk Wait, up what? here. Yeah, so we're taking the stairs, walking up to then walk down the jet road. I am <laughs> so confused. This feels so DIY. <laughs> this is so cool, wow. Wow, there's no elevators, so they have to carry a girl up in a wheelchair up the stairs. Also, I love how easily anyone could just like sneak away out there. I know. Like, you could just go onto any other plane or do whatever you <laughs> Let's want. Let's go somewhere the... exciting. KL is exciting. Yeah. So we're actually going to Singapore in three days is the main reason for being in this region. But I especially love KL. I love the food, so I thought, We'll stop there for a few days on our way to Singapore to pick up our friend for a very special video. Okay, just so we paid 3,150 baht per person for the, not the flexible package, but the middle package where you get a meal, seat selection, we got hot seats, extra leg room here in the emergency exit. That's incredibly good for a two hour flight. That's what I love about Air Asia. It's so cheap to add extras, it's cheap to add extra luggage, it's cheap to add good seats, meals, everything. They don't try to rip you off. So let's check out everything in here. <laughs> I love like what is Halloween about? <laughs> All right, so let's check the menu. It's a long one, but Air Asia is pretty iconic for their food and drinks. Which I mean, seeing this menu, it makes sense. I think they've made it even better since before the pandemic. If you look, I mean, hello. If this was non dairy, this is the drink for me. My favorite drink in the world, bubble tea. Of course, you want to pre-order food like we did. There's more options then. I mean, check this out. I, I'm kind of intrigued by this, to be honest. Then we have all the food. As I said, this is an addition to what you can get online. You can order these guys to come to your city. Um. <laughs> check this out. Um. Yeah, oh my gosh, this. I am a bit skeptical of the mango though. I don't know if the mango is gonna be like We'll just have good. sticky rice. Yeah, check this out. Vegetarian instant noodles. So many good drinks. Check this out. Some like beauty vitamin drink. Collagen. <laughs> Damn. So many snacks. I mean, it just goes on. Look at this, mm, dried mango. Drinks, mix and match. Okay, I think maybe that's it. 
And then there's also the fun section that is Air Asia merch, which is so affordable as what blows me away. Like, look at this. Airplane models for, this is like less than, I think this is about $45 for a one 200 airplane model. Amazing. And then we have Air Asia merch, which, you know, I don't know who's necessarily buying that. <laughs> And then we have all this fun stuff. Look, imagine getting this for your kids. How cute is that? I would love to do that someday. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's it. I'm a big fan of AirAsia, as you can tell. We won the lottery. This is such a nice presentation. How nice does this look? Okay, let's try it. Not amazing, but not bad. It's so cheap, so it's a it's a thumbs up. this really cool sky bridge. This is in the Air Asia terminal, but I will insert a picture of what it looks like during the day because this is very unique, you know? They have it at Gatwick in London, they have it at LaGuardia now, but it's so cool being in a building where planes can go right underneath. Unfortunately, it's a little too dark to see that right now, but yeah, love it. And so many good memories landing at this airport in this terminal as well. Super easy, and now we're picking up our bag. We are waiting a long time. Life without priority bags. That's not a life I want to live. <laughs> poor, poor us. <laughs> Please send your thoughts and prayers. Even though it's past 10 p.m., Oscar and I haven't had dinner besides the tiny meal on the plane. But this is what's so amazing about KLIA, especially two, this terminal we're in now, because there's an entire mall connected to it. And frankly, although I love like the jewel in Singapore, this mall is really what you want. It's just stores, it's restaurants, it's food courts, it's perfect. All right, we made it. Okay, tell me another airport where you can land, go through customs, and one minute later be in a food court that sells mains for like, I'll put the conversion here, every dish was 15 ringgit. It's, it's incredible. I'm so happy we're back. It's been 11 long, hard months. Yeah. We didn't get what we ordered, but huh? I didn't wanna what do you mean? Yeah, we got the wrong thing, but it's okay. Check this out. I mean, about $3 each for a soup, a chili sauce, and some very burned but delicious looking mock chicken, rice, and we have noodles. I mean, 
Wow. Okay, we did not hate the food, as you can see. <laughs> Do we return our trip? And now it's time to catch a grab, which is like 50 minutes into our hotel. <laughs> so we can go to sleep, hopefully before midnight. Wow. See, this is what I mean by, it's like a mall. <laughs> it's, oh, there's a nice grocery store. There's everything. When I say they have everything you need here, they, it's really true. They also have some great hotels right in the terminal or next to the terminal. Although it's late and I'm tired, the excitement of being here is strong. Mm -hmm.